afternoon, this thankful Thursday, October the 6th, I believe, 2022. October the 6th, 2022. We bless the Lord for another opportunity that he has given us to come together on today, this Thursday, to pray and petition him through our prayers on today. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is indeed good. Let us exalt and continue to praise his name together. We hope and pray that everyone is safe and doing well. On today, listen, Deacon Esther McCoy, she is going to come at this time and give us the names of those on the sick and prayer list, those requesting a special prayer on today. Deacon McCoy, are you available? Are you online, Deacon McCoy? Yes, sir, I'm here. Good afternoon, Pastor Tobias, members, visitors, and friends. Our special prayer request for this Thursday, October the 6th, 2022, reads as follows. Minister Rachel Mitchell, Sister Fanny Moman, Sister Jackie Lewis, the niece of Deacon James Todd. She resides in Atlanta. Brother Larry Stevenson, the brother of Sister Deborah Stevenson, he is in the Yazoo Rehabilitation and Health Center. Sister Annie McClowing, the oldest sister of Sister Stevenson, she is resting at home and re resides in West Cabina, California. Sister Linda Sutterway, Sister Ella Buford, Reverend Matthew Blackwell, Sister Laverne Tien, Sister Carolyn Miller, Sister Taylor Tobias, Sister Sonji Cooper, Brother R.T. Clerk and family, Sister Jeannie White, Reverend Durr, she resides in Seattle, Washington, Dr. Hymethia Thompson, Sister Carolyn Fleming, Deacon Vernell Fleming, he did undergo surgery and is resting and recovering at home. Brother James Clay and his wife, Linda, they both had surgery. They reside in Moss Point, Mississippi. They are cousins to the Fleming family. Dr. Bobby Parker and family in the passing of her brother, Brother Tommy Swanson. He resides in Faraday, Louisiana. Funeral arrangements are incomplete. Also, Dr. Parker and her two daughters, Sister Brianna Parker and Sister Desiree Day, as they battle cancer. They reside in Trinity, Texas. Sister Diane H. Johnson, the sister of Sister Carolyn Fleming, she resides in Natchez, Mississippi. Again, she resides in Natchez, Mississippi. Brother Calvin McKnight, the nephew of Sister Carolyn Fleming, he is in the University Medical Center in ICU. Sister Teresa Hargrave, who resides in Natchez, Mississippi, and Sister Doris Hargrave, who reside in Vidalia, Louisiana. They are sister-in-laws of Sister Carolyn Fleming. Uh, and we're asking for your continued prayers for the Champ and Fleming family in the passing of his nephew, Brother Ricky Champ. Deacon Ernest Fleming, the brother of Deacon Vernell Fleming. He is in the hospital in Dallas, Texas. Brother Bernard Thompson, the nephew of the late Deacon Eddie Thompson, he resides in Fort Worth, Texas. Sister Stacy McMorris and family in the passing of her brother, namely James McMorris, AKA Joshua McMorris. The funeral will be October the 8th, 2022 at 11 a.m. at Good Street MB Church, Dallas, Texas. Pastor Eddie Jenkins, funeral home, Golden Gate Funeral Home in Dallas, Texas. Brother Garner Jones, he is the son of Sister Murtis Wilson. He resides in Gulfport, Mississippi. Sister Linda Weatherspy and family in the passing of her son-in-law. He resided in Dallas, Texas. We're also asking for traveling grace as he travels Friday to Dallas, Texas. Brother Robert and Brother Robert Owens, he was a former member of New Mount Zion Church. Let us continue to be prayerful for our sick and shut in, those hospitalized, bereaved, battling cancer, and the rising rate of crime here in the city of Jackson. Joshua 1 and 9, have, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thy goest. This concludes the special prayer request for this Thursday, October the 6th, 2022.
Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon McCoy, um, for sharing that, uh, that list and that information with us on today. A few additional announcements. Um, Bible class will uh, be Monday, October the 10th. Listen, we uh, are in. We are covering Genesis chapter 50 at the moment. And uh, we will likely move into Exodus chapter 1 on next Monday as well. So please, ma'am, please, sir, if you can go ahead and read Exodus chapter 1, we're going to move into the book of Exodus once we wrap up chapter 50 um, in the book of Genesis. Um, also, Sister Janine Wilson is going to come uh, toward the end. Uh, once we conclude our prayers today, she's going to come with a quick announcement as it relates to the Women's Day observance on the third Sunday in this month. Um, I am scheduled to preach uh, in a one-night revival uh, service next Tuesday, I believe, next Tuesday, October the 11th uh, at 6.30 p.m. We will be at uh, Greater Northside, Greater Northside Missionary Baptist Church, right there off uh, Wiggins Road. Uh, Wiggins Road, so we solicit your prayers uh, and your participation, if possible, uh, as we worship with the Greater Northside Baptist Church on next Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. I want to thank uh, the music ministry, Brother Malcolm Dodd and Deacon Jared Fiber and our male choir for doing an awesome job on last night as we were in revival there at the uh, Pine Grove Missionary Baptist Church on Highway 49. Had a wonderful time in the Lord. So thank you all so very much uh, for worshiping with us on last night. Uh, our devotional talk today um, centers around the thought about being a good church member. As I was reading and studying early part of last week, uh, there's a book uh, that I read some time ago. I believe the author is Tim Raines. I'm not sure, but I believe the author is Tim Raines, and he wrote a real good book. It's a really small book that talks about uh, being a good church member or being a good leader in the church. I have various scriptures that, that I'm going to use as a point of reference, so there's not just one particular passage of scripture that we're going to use for the devotional thought on today. But, but it centers around being a good leader or being a good church member. Here's an important question we can ask ourselves. If every church member was like you, would your church be a healthy church? Lord have mercy. That is an interesting question. Think about that, if you will, on today. If every church member was like you, would your church be a healthy church? When it comes to the life of a church, every church member matters. How many people do you know who do not take church membership seriously. Lord have mercy. Because church membership matters, and in order to have a healthy church or healthy leaders in the church, there are some specific characteristics that every church member must strive to possess. I have two or three, well, I have three that I'm going to mention today, and then we'll cover the rest next week if the Lord says the same. Number one, every church member or every leader must be teachable. Lord have mercy, Jesus. They must be teachable. What does that mean? Think about the word disciple. The word disciple comes from the Greek word uh, meaning one who engages in learning through the instruction from another. In other words, a disciple is a learner of Jesus Christ. So as followers of Christ, all church members, all leaders should have a desire to learn. Lord have mercy. If a member in the church, a person in the church, or a leader in the church, if they do not have a desire to learn, that is a major problem. Wow. Because as a follower of Christ, all church members should desire to learn. All leaders should desire to learn more. Many people are unwilling to be taught anything, and this is what happens. They remain on a very shallow spiritual level. So number one, if you're going to be a good member or a good leader, he or she must be, number one, teachable. Let me give you another one. Number two, 
they must be usable. Now, what does that mean, usable? Think about this. When Paul used the illustration of human anatomy um, to describe the importance of the local church membership, he was driving home a very important point. In other words, this is what Paul is saying. Don't just show up to worship and sit. Wow. Be involved in the life of the church and strive to become a useful member. He or she must be usable. In other words, they must look for opportunity. This is how some people are. We want individuals to approach us and present opportunities to us. But the word of God clearly tells us that as Christians, as church members, we must look for opportunities to serve in ministry. Look for ways to serve other people in the church. Number one, he or she must be teachable. Number two, they must be usable. Then let me give you the third one. I'll cover the rest next week if the Lord says the same. Number three, they must be lovable. Wow. Because according to the word of God, We are called to love one another. You'll see that in John chapter 15. I think we all can say we've known individuals who were hard to love. But we are called to love one another, and this means giving and receiving the love of the church. In 1 John chapter 4, the apostle John says this. He makes it very clear that God expects us to love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has born, been born of God, and they know God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. In order to be a good church member, in order to be a good leader, he or she must be teachable, usable, and also lovable. I hope that blessed someone on today because it blessed me in my study. We have three individuals who are going to bless us with prayers on today. Uh, we have Sister Emil Broome, we have Dr. Dolores Wright, and we have Deacon Vernell Sanders. Thank you all so very much. And we're going to start with Sister Broome on today. If you're on the line, Sister Broome, if you will lead us in prayer, we would appreciate that greatly. Are you there, okay. Sister Broome? Yes, I am, Pastor. Uh, good, good, good afternoon, everyone. Let us let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come at this moment to just say thank you, Father God, for waking us this morning, uh, giving us the uh, activities of our lands and able to move around and 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 do your will, Father God. And Father God, right now, I just want to pray for our leaders, Father God be they leaders in church, leaders in government, leaders in education, Father God. We pray that they will be godly leaders, Father God, for your people. We pray that they will seek your guidance, Lord, as they go about and and do their daily tasks and exercise faith, knowing that you will strengthen them and help them in any matter that comes before them. And then, Father, that they will be faithful and just to lead in the manner in which you have directed. Father God, we pray that you help leaders to recognize and realize that leading requires them to serve. So, God, we pray for faithful servant leaders who will lead not for selfish or personal ambition, or vain conceit, Father God, that they will help help them to work in humility. Father God, we pray that you will help our leaders to identify the needs of your people through divine wisdom and understanding. Father God, we pray that any leaders that don't know you, Father God, will get to know you and that, Father God, that you would work in their lives, Father God, that they they don't realize what has been happening to them. But 
that you were in the midst of helping them as they go about and, and, and do your work for your people, Father God. I pray that you will help our leaders to identify um, the needs of your people through your divine wisdom and understanding. Lord, help them to not be uh, ineffective leaders, Father God, but leaders with the faith to act for the betterment of your people and not be fearful or ashamed. Father God, we pray that you will hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us your peace. And this is in the precious name of thy son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Broom, so very much for getting us started on today. Dr. Wright, if you're on the line, we turn it over to you at this time. Dr. Dolores Wright, are you there? Uh, Dr. Wright, are you on the line? She may be on me. Dr. Dolores Wright, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We hear you well now. Hear me? Yes, we hear you now. Yes, okay. we do. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, sweet Savior, the Son, and blessed Holy Spirit, we call upon your hallowed name, and we come into your presence to thank you for all you're doing for us now for what you have already done, and for what you have planned for our futures. We are grateful, for we know that with your God-centered leadership, we can do all things. Nothing is impossible. God, we thank you for allowing us to walk in your grace and glory and for keeping our faith fresh. We thank you for our leaders, that they will submit to God's will being done and for the advancement of his kingdom. Please give every leader strength so that they do not grow weary in their roles. Help them to care about issues that impact the most vulnerable. Help all of us, Lord, to have the wisdom to make decisions big and small and convictions to follow you, even when it contradicts our uh, uh, desires or the demands of others. Show us uh, your ways, Lord. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth. And teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day. Help us reach across our differences and work together. Holy Spirit, please lead us in all areas. Teach us all things and guide us into all truth. We are grateful. We're grateful for your power and for your presence. We appreciate also the wise counselors that you place around us. Take, I pray, the bits and pieces of virtue that are in each of us. Restore our hope. Refresh our spirit and inspire us. Please remove anything that would uh, hinder us from receiving Christ with joy. We ask your blessings on those who have been uh, negatively impacted by Hurricane Ian. Help them to rebuild and restore their homes if this is at all feasible. Or make them uh, help them move to another uh, safer area if that is more appropriate. Of all of our members and friends who are fighting the civic, the COVID-19 or other illnesses, and please come to those whose loved ones have been transformed. We ask a very special blessing on our pastor and his family and on all the members and friends who participate with us in this prayer. Whatever else, let it always be pleasant in your sight, Lord, but whatever that we do, let us please you. It is in Jesus' name that we ask all of these things and more. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Wright, for blessing us as well. 
Uh, Deacon Sanders, if you're on the line, if you can lead us in our third prayer, we would appreciate it so much. You Are you me? there, Deacon Sanders? Yes, Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We hear you well, Deacon Sanders. Okay, thanks. Good afternoon, me and my Zion. Family, friends, and, and visitors. Let us pray. Dear Father God, thank you for helping us to make it through these difficult times. Thank you that you carry us through the uncertainty of deep waters, through the flames of trials, and through the pain of hard losses. We are constantly aware of how much we need you, your grace, your strength, your power, working through even the toughest, the toughest days. Help us to keep our focus first on you this season. Please forgive us for giving too much time and attention to other things for looking to other people before coming to you first. Help us to reflect again on you. Thank you that you come to give new life, peace, hope, and joy. Thank you that your power is made perfect in our weakness. Help us to remember that the gift of Christ is our greatest treasure. Fill us with your joy and the peace of your spirit. Direct our hearts and minds toward you. Thank you for your reminder that both in seasons of celebration and in seasons of brokenness, you're still with us. For you never leave us. Thank you for your daily powerful presence in our lives that we can be assured you are towards us. Your eyes are over us, and your ears are open to our prayer. Thank you that you found us with favor as with a shield, and we are safe in your care. We choose to press in close to you today and keep you first in our hearts and lives. Without you, we would surely fail. But with you, there is great hope. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for bringing us into this new season of up here. We look, to, we look forward to all that you still have in store for us. We just want to thank you, God. We want to thank you so very much because without you, we could not be. I want to do a special prayer for all of those on the prayer line. We help, uh, we hope that, uh, that uh, you will, uh, your prayers will be answered according to Jesus Christ. God knows what you need, and he is there to take care. These things we ask in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Deacon Sanders. Thank you uh, again, Dr. Wright. And uh, thank you all so very much for those prayers, Sister Boom, that you pray as well. As we continue in prayer, uh, God, our Father, we bless your name for another Thursday. God, we are thankful for this Thursday you have given us. God, we thank you for uh, the change of weather, the change of season, which reminds us that seasons do change. We thank you for that, God, because we realize and recognize that every day will not be the same, but you are God who is in control. You are in charge of everything. So, God, we thank you for allowing us to rise this morning and see another day. We thank you for the activity of our limbs, and we just thank you for the family and friends that you have given us. God, we ask that you will honor those prayers that have already been prayed. We know that you hear prayer but we know that you answer prayer as well. So, God, we thank you for being a hearer of our prayers and being able to answer those prayers as well. God, we pray for each individual whose name was called on the sick and prayer list, those requesting special prayer, God. Sometimes it seems as though the, the list goes on and on, but your word tells us that we will always be at a point in our life when we need to call you and ask you for certain things. So, God, we're not even... Uh, praying selfish prayers on today. We pray that you will bless each individual, 
name that was called on the prayer list, those requesting special prayer, those who are in the hospital, sick and shut in, whatever their needs might be, God, those who are experiencing bereavement in their homes, in their family. God, I pray that you would just be exactly what they need during this particular season in their life. As your word says, God, I pray that they do not get weary in well-doing because the word says that we will all reap if we faint not. So bless each of them, those names that were called, God. I pray for each individual, again, who's on the prayer call on the line today. I thank you for their faithfulness because your word tells us that we should always pray and not faint. And sometimes, God, it seems as though some of our prayers are hindered. They are not answered. But we trust you knowing that in due time, in certain seasons, that's what you would do. You are here and answer our prayers because you are a God who has perfect timing. God, I pray for the leaders of our church. Thank you for the prayer, uh, for the members of our church and our leaders. God, as the devotional thought reminded us of today, I pray that each member, each leader will be teachable. Allow all of us, each of us to know that there is more to learn and understand in the Word of God. We do not know all there is to know, so allow us to be teachable, because the truth of the matter is, God, if we're ever to the point that we think we know everything, that we will not learn more about you. So, God, I pray that all of us remain teachable, usable, allow us to see that there is so much work that needs to be done in the church, in the body of Christ, because Jesus said that the field uh, is plentiful, but those workers and the laborers are few. There is so much work that needs to be done. I pray, God, that each member of New Mount Zion Church will see the importance of being active and involved in ministry and in the lives of each member of the church. Then, God, I also pray that you allow us to be lovable. Let us have lovable spirits where we find it easy to love other people, but then other people find it easy to love us as well. God, we have so much to thank you for. We pray for the uh, engagements that we have coming up, that you will allow your spirit to be manifested in us, that your word will go forth and be a blessing to the people. But then, God, I also pray that you would bless the activities and events that are coming up at New Mount Zion Church. Allow all that we do, God, whenever the doors are open, whenever anyone speaks or say anything, allow us, Father God, to put you front and put you first in all that we do so that you can get the glory. We love you so much for who you are in our lives, what you are doing, and how you are keeping us in perfect peace. God, continue to forgive us of our sins and keep us in your care. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Listen, before you disconnect on today, Sister Janine is going to come with a quick announcement as well. Sister Wilson, if you're on the line, we turn it over to you real quick. Sister Janine, are you there? Sister Janine Wilson, are you there? You may be on mute. All right, Sister Wilson may, Sister Janine might be on mute. I thought I saw her log into the system, but she may not be. Can you hear me, Pastor? Okay, gotcha. We got you now. Yes, ma'am. Okay, sorry about that. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Our 73rd annual Women's Day celebration will be held. October 17th, which is the third Sunday in this month, during our 11 a.m. service. Please come out and invite your family and friends to be blessed and encouraged. Our guest speaker will be Thea Faulkner, who is the director of the Partners in Education program for Jackson Public Schools. And this year's theme is Fearless, Faithful Women Walking in Power and Purpose. Theme scripture is Psalm 46, verses 1 through 5. And last but not least, please wear your purple. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sister Janine Wilson, for that announcement. And thank you, Sister Kimberly Austin, for uh, chairing, serving as a chairperson for that celebration. Listen, thank you all so very much for calling in and participating in our midday prayer on today. Call in this coming Sunday for Sunday school at 9 a.m. and then Sunday morning worship at 11. We look to see you in the place. Until Sunday uh, morning, I pray that the grace of God be with each of you and that you have a 
wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Conference will automatically end in 60 seconds. Thank you.